So let's come back to our starting point to solve classical mechanics problems. So in this case, the Newton second law. Um, you have been given this law as a postulate. Uh, it um, just expresses the fact that if we apply a force on an object, this object will acquire an acceleration. Fine. Um, that the definition of the force is not really straightforward, and why an acceleration? Why not a velocity? Well, it's just, uh, as I said, a postulate that something which uh, turns out to work, and that's why we are using it. But there might be other laws or other first principles which uh, work as well and uh, are not uh, written as F equal MA. Uh, and sometimes uh, they can be even more powerful and more useful um, to solve uh, problems. So we are not going to use Newton's second law at all in this course. We are going to use another set of equations um, which are called the Euler-Lagrange equations. This equation may look complicated at the first sight because it um, makes different sort of uh, derivatives, as you can see. Um, and also we, we need to define what is the object uh, L. So, but you will soon see that using these uh, Euler-Lagrange equations are often uh, much simpler than uh, using Newton's law. We will soon take a simple example, but first let me define what is L. L is called the Lagrangian, and in classical mechanics it is simply uh, expressed, defined as a difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy. Note that we have a minus sign here, so in, unlike the total energy, which will be the sum of the kinetic and potential energy, the Lagrangian is difference is defined as the difference between the two. In the case of an object falling under gravity, we simply have... We now need to plug this Lagrangian into the Euler-Lagrange equation. So, for instance, for the right-hand side, we have to calculate the derivative of L according to x. The only term in the Lagrangian which uh, depends on x is the potential energy term. So we have... For the left-hand side, we have first to take the derivative according to x dot, which only appears in the kinetic energy term, so we have... Now we need to take the time derivative, which gives... Combining the left and right hand side, we recover the equation of motion. So we see that uh, Newton's second law and Euler-Lagrange equations lead to the same equation of motion. So they, for this problem at least, we show that they were equivalent. It may look, uh, in this particular example, that the Euler-Lagrange equation method is more complicated than Newton's second law. But we will see that, in general, uh, this is not the case, and Euler-Lagrange equations are actually more useful. Uh, a word of caution, though. The two approaches are only equivalent when the system does not have uh, friction or dissipation. So it only f work in the case uh, where we have um, what we call conservative forces that is, forces which derive from a, a potential energy. Of course, this works for gravity, um, as we have a potential energy mgx, and the resulting force which derives from it. We will later prove that these two approaches are formally equivalent, and that the Euler-Lagrange equations come from um, something more fundamental, which we call the least uh, action principle, or more precisely, the stationary action principle. We will also show how the stationary action principle actually comes from quantum physics, and later we will uh, um, 
look at the case of special relativity, in which case, however, um, the form of the Lagrangian will be different.